Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Flatiron Syndicate Motorsports Podcast. This show is brought to you by Flatiron's Tuning, your source for any aftermarket or OEM Subaru parts. Be sure to check out our store at flatironstuning.com, and stay tuned with Flatiron's Tuning. All right. Let's dive into it. Welcome back, everybody, to the Flatiron Syndicate Podcast. We're here again with Jeremy from uh, Money Shift Rally, Tossa from OTC Racing. We're here in the shop. Topic of the day is, well, all right, I'll lead up to the topic and say this. So there's Subaru, and Subaru's done a lot of cool things, and there's a lot of cool cars. But then of late, they've kind of made some choices that make you go, what are you doing, Subaru? And, like, obviously the big one is uh, killing off the STI. Multi-link rear suspension. Multi, okay, we'll talk about that. Hatches. So there, things are going reasonably well, but it also feels like things are kind of going in a direction that us as enthusiasts are not as enthused about. In some in certain circumstances, I don't know. The, basically, what we want to talk about is how would we fix, how would we save Subaru? I think, I, not to say that Subaru needs saving, but they might need saving because they're just doing some weird stuff. And the, the biggest concern I have is like, not necessarily exactly right this year, this model year, but like down the direction they're going for the future, like what's going to be left for us as enthusiasts in two years, three years, four years down the road, you know, or is there still going to be reason to be excited about Subarus or is it all about the GDs and the GCs? And, and that's just, that's just what it's going to be. So that's the idea. That's, that's, that's the, the question for the day. So, um, I'm a long time Subaru driver. I learned to drive in a stick shift 96 Outback stick car. Okay. Uh, so today I drove here in my 1992 Subaru SVX, which is like my favorite car ever. It's six speed swapped, which just makes it even better than I, I mean, I had it in a long time. And it's how they should have, they, they didn't even have a six speed, but right. that's what they should have done. Oh yeah. It's a great car. Um, and I, sometimes I take that car to the track and it's basically all stock except for the transmission. So, you know, it's like a little fun, but it's not a race car. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I try to drive on a daily basis. And I love that thing. And it's 32 years old. Uh, yeah, that's it's crazy to even think about that. I know. Yeah, but meanwhile, uh, last weekend uh, I was up at High Plains Raceway and somebody brought with them their like brand new, fresh off the dealership lot, like twelve hundred mile, twenty twenty three WRX. Yeah. Uh, and he's a cool guy and he let me drive it and I took that out on track, bone stock, even the stock tires, mm -hmm. and I had a blast. It was, it yeah. was the manual car. It was yeah. a six-speed manual, but it was like a higher trim one. The interior was like the cool, like, bucket seats that are leather, Alcantara. Yeah. And it was a blast to drive. And, like, you know, I literally, I, I drove my SVX at the track, and then I drove this WX at the track. 32 years difference in age, and they both really made me smile. Which one was faster? Oh, the WX. The yeah. WX was way faster. I, I heard times, uh, our local racetrack, High Plains Raceway, um, I want to say two twelve, friend of, friend of the pod Nigel from you know me racing. I think he put a two twelve or two thirteen something like that. Something like that. Yeah, the, the the WRX was fast. In fact, the thing the thing that held it back is the thing that I'm sure you, I know you've talked about. The brakes heated yeah. up, and you could you, you kind of had to take it easy after a couple hot laps. Yeah. I mean, those cars come with dot three brake fluid in them. I think from the factory. I think all series yeah. always come with dot three. Right. So yeah. you know, yeah. it's not track prepped. But with no. a few simple changes, it would be a pretty fast car at that track. You make you make a strong point in that there's a lot of positives with the WRX for sure. That there, we talked on the podcast previously about like the 22 WRX, the 22 BRZ. They were both big steps forward, which is which is encouraging, for sure. Um, the the concern is with the WRX side that that there is no STI. Like that's I'm that's, not that's uh, haven't driven so I've also driven a VA STI a twenty one a twenty twenty one yeah. uh, STI at High Plains several times, basically like stock, not much different with it. I think it was on similar tires, um, uh, and stock brakes. The WRX felt faster than the STI. It actually suspension wise, it felt very similar. It handled very yeah, similar. I can see that. Uh, it felt just as planted as the STI did. Um, the brakes on the WRX definitely heated up way faster than the STI brakes yeah. did for obvious reasons. The, yeah. the, 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 you know, the later STI has huge Brembo's. Um, but I, I mean, if you put Nigel in that STI, I bet you he'd turn a similar time. Or, or faster. 
one, what, I'll say this, the, the WRX at, at High Plains, that, that car, you could stay in third gear through like, uh, oh, yeah. turn, turn six, yeah. uh, in particular. There's a couple turns at that track where the STI, you'd want to downshift to try, try to get the, those revs up. Get turn six is like a, basically a really hard, tight, it's one of the tightest corners. Right. It's, it's yeah. not quite a hairpin, but it's almost yeah. there. Yeah. You, you'd want to downshift a, tur a turbo car typically. I feel like because you want to get the turbo up, you want to you want to get the yep. spool going again. The 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 twenty twenty three WRX, you stay in third gear, it will power right through that, and the, the turbo's right there. The 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 craziest thing with that two point four liter engine, and and man, it it's a it, that engine. I think the the FA twenty was a step forward. It was kind of like a step off to the left. It was it was slightly forward and slightly off to the side of what the EJ was. They were trying a lot of new technology, direct injection, like whole new cylinder head architecture. Low mount you know, turbo, stuff yeah. you see in a lot of other platforms yeah. that have been turbos. You know, and it's like the 24 is like the next iteration of that. Like they, they really hit that motor out of the park. I mean, the, the craziest statistic to me about the 2.4 liter, the FA24 turbo, is that that engine at 2,000 RPMs makes more torque than the Alcorn 3.6 liter NA engine does. Yeah. And the power band is, is very flat. I think you have more of a power band with FA24 turbo than you did with the old 3.6. Oh, definitely. Because yes. it has more top end as well. Right. Like they, they, they figured out this way to make that FA24 like have this massive, massive power band. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, you can do some really interesting things with it. It has a lot of potential. I mean, and, and there's a lot of potential yeah. in the WRX for sure. The, the factory tuning on the FA24 brings Subaru up to the standard that a lot of the other hot hatch manufacturers have been yeah. like if you've ever driven a focus rs yeah. or a modern golf r those are very capable cars you know out of the box they are pretty close to what you'd want to take on a racetrack and, and, and rip around with right yeah uh yeah, the the you know if you looked at the fa wrx the, the like the 15 to, to 21 wrx um you know they were fun dailies but out of the box they were not very Track cars, right. autocross cars. They and they had a relatively them. low threshold for where you were, were going to have to really do a lot of work on the engine yeah. and to the drivetrain to really bring the performance level up, which right. was roughly speaking about 350 wheel horsepower, 350 foot pounds of torque, give or take. Oh, um, in terms of where you could bring the the engine up to? And, yeah. and the transmission. So sure. because because it's still a split case six speed, mm -hmm. the, the durability of the, of the six speed in the WRX is never... It's basically very much like the old five-speed transmissions, not really any anywhere akin to like the SCI six-speed is. Right. And then, you know, the, the rods were the weak link in the FA20, FA20, um, where you can actually just stock turbo on the 85 to the car up to the point where you can make 400 horsepower, but you've been a rod, potentially. Um, so, like, if you really wanted to make more power than about 350 wheel horsepower, with yeah. that WRX, you're looking at, well, you got to do a full engine build, and you really need to swap out, you know, put in the SA six speeds. I mean, you're talking twenty, twenty five thousand dollars, something in this ballpark to to basically get you. You, you can get up to three hundred horsepower, a little bit above, very easily, much more easily than an STI. But if you wanted to go yeah, much above three fifty, like true. it's a huge right. And huge. and high horsepower FA WRXs were kind of rare. Like yeah. not a lot of people would take them for this reason, right? For, for, for a bunch of reasons, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, at a certain point, the EJ was so well developed as a tuning platform that if you were like, hey, I have this car, it looks like this, it's a 2016 yeah. Subaru, and I want to make 550 wheel, you would be you would be you'd be taking advantage of the benefit of all the knowledge of tuning and building that people already had on the EJ. So you'd be like, yeah, get rid of the WRX, I'll get a 2016 STI, and I'll just make that yeah. the big horsepower car and everything. So, and, and there's, there seems to be, in terms of that, some shift with the FE24 WRX, especially now with the TR coming out, we've got the bigger brakes, basically the, the STI Brembo's off of the, the previous STI, and the potential in that 2.4, I mean, really it's the drivetrain that's still the weak link, um, but yeah. there's a lot of potential there. I so, mean, for, for a lot of, for a lot of, like, bolt-on setup, FA24 cars, you know, 2022s, 2023s, you know, you're not going to quite get up to the limit of the transmission in a way where it's like you do one pull and you break it. Like, right, right. Like, you know. It seems like, it seems like, be it the final drive ratio or, or whatnot, uh, or gearing. They but, hold up better, yeah. 
they, they seem to they seem it seems like you can easily pretty easily get to like mid 300s maybe even more than mid 300s with like very very little effort and the drivetrain seems to hold up reasonably well in this, in this current WRX. Some the I mean there's tuners across the country now who have turned up that stock motor stock everything in the car they've done like you know down pipes and and yeah. and some E85 or something like that they've gotten pretty close to 400 with with their motor. Yeah, pretty easily and and the guys that want to go for big power six speed swaps are not hard. Yeah. They put a six speed swap in it, and then the engine is stout, the drivetrain is stout, and just away you go. So I don't know. I think that from an enthusiast perspective, there's a lot to smile about for coming from Subaru. Right okay. Now. So what do you think? Do you think do you think Subaru's moving in a, a good direction, or do you think they're moving in a not so good direction? Um, I don't think it matters. Um, you don't think it matters. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's a uh, no negativity doesn't sell as well on the internet. Um, Kidding? Negativity is the bread and butter of the internet. I mean, yeah, you, the, need the, the internet, you need the, the internet, internet user to be me. negative, but we have to be yeah. positive to <laughs> trigger their negativity. That's, That's how it works. But, okay. um, you know, this is something that, you know, listening to your conversation, um, it's, it's you hear a lot of the same kind of talking points across the conversations and across the Subaru community. Where, oh, yeah, well, it was a little bad for a while, but it seems like it's kind of getting better. Hey, a little bit of work here, and maybe you're going to get near what the other competitors have as a baseline, stuff like that. So compared to Subarus for the last, you know, 15 years, um, is it an improvement now from where it was over the last, you know, like the the dark ages of Subaru done for the last, for the last you know, decade mm -hmm. and a half? Um, yeah, I think things are going in the right direction after they tanked wicked hard. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, they're doing more and more things to kind of put them back in the conversation with other import junk, yeah. which is cool. If you're, if you're baseline for like, Hey, are things looking good? Well, we're getting back on, it's like, we're, we're trying to get back up to mid pack, um, and that's exciting. We're talking about numbers like three or four hundred horsepower, where like even like the Volkswagen Auto Group cars, it's just you plug in your cell phone and they go there, right? Yeah. It's, it's not even like you're having to swap stuff or swap fuel or right. something like that. You just take the limiters off and they're there, which is what our now like cool baseline is for a Subaru thing. That's not that exciting. They've never been, I don't think, like particularly good tarmac cars. Um, uh, sure. Except for in a rally situation, right? So it's well, yeah. um, you, you can turn them into it, but it's it's not it's not as automatic as something like you know a BMW or a Porsche. You want to be fast on tarmac? Go buy a Porsche. Yeah, go buy a Porsche. Go buy Corvette. a Corvette. You know, yeah, I mean, we're talking true. about these lap times in the in the two teens or or low, you know, two tweens at at high planes. That's what my legacy runs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's a stripped out legacy but it's not making really any horsepower it's light yeah. and that was on a like a dot slick um all right so maybe and so maybe and so it's, that's not that i mean because a stock okay. what i've written a c6 i think um what's the current corvette c8 c8, c8. so maybe it was a c7 z06 yeah. on just like a sporty street tire like a summer tire off tire rack and it ran like a 205 what's right? not so, than what's pet what's petterford put down at his c8 he said one nine c8. something or one five something in a in his with his Hoosiers, right? The the C so he's got a does Mike Pettiford go for racing with the C seven uh what is it? Because he has a, he has a C eight now, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he has too many Corvettes. I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't know, he's got like okay. six. But he ran a one fifty something in his like C seven in the Z R one. So the C seven Z R one is the fastest one and it did a one fifty one. The new C eight, which was just the nationally aspirated mid engine Corvette, that one I think he with sticky tires, and he did something to the suspension. I think he got that one down to like a 150, I'm gonna say 57. And then he, he now has the new C8 Z06, and I think that did a 154, but don't quote me on that. All right, so we're talking 20 seconds a faster. quarter to a third of a minute faster yep. on a two minute track than a Subaru, and, and that's our bench line for, yeah, Subaru's doing cool stuff right now. Well, but I guess, Okay, so okay. Let, let me let me bring some context to this question. And we'll go I was going to say, go I think Subaru is doing all right because I've gotten in the driver's seat of a couple of modern Subarus and been like, hey, this is fun. Mm -hmm. I think they're I'm, doing, not, I'm not trying to win a race right. with my brand new 
WRX, right? But yeah, but I haven't had. I don't think they're fun. I think they feel the same as the other cars, but slower. So mm. I think they're big, fat, um, slow, squishy. Other lots of creature comforts. What's that? Other cars being the older supers. No, uh, they're the same as all of the cars right now. Um, like if you took the badging off, and I wasn't super familiar with like Starlink or something like that, and you yeah. plot me in a Subaru, I couldn't tell you if I was in a Camry or if I was in oh. an Odyssey. Mm. No, 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 or, no, no, or whatever. I think that they all drive kind of the same. I don't think you've driven. So. If you, if you, I don't think I, I would say okay. You can't tell the difference between that and like a GTI, maybe, but that mm. and a Camry, it's a little different. Because the Camry is nicer inside. Yeah, <laughs> that's part of it. Because the Camry is nicer inside, squishier, and. Uh, honestly, the, the, the Camry still complains at you more about you driving badly. Like, hey, stop driving that way. You have to drive this okay. way. Mm. Beep, 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 yeah, beep. but yeah. that's, you know, it, the, the chassis itself, the, the driver interface is still, it, it's still, you're just driving a comfort spaceship around. Mm. Um, okay, so the other thing I drove last okay. week was a 2024 Ascent. Mm -hmm. And... You know, effectively the same engine as the WRX. Yeah, very similar. Very yeah. similar, yeah. by the way, information systems as well. Yep. Uh, and one yep. of the cool things about the, the the information systems in both of those cars is the car actually told me, like, what the oil temp was and what the coolant temperature was. And, there's and more data. There's more yeah. data, yeah. which, you know, yeah. you know the, the, both of those cars have oil level sensors. As you know, I'm a fan of in terms of your yeah. reliability, right? But yeah. that that ascent did not drive, did not feel like a WRX. That they were completely worlds apart cars. Yeah. yeah, and you know I'm okay with that. Like I own the SVX. I also own a 2010 Outback, and that's my okay. I'm gonna go on a long ass road trip and pick up a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna drive the the Outback. It gets better gas mileage. It uh, has tons of interior space. It drives kind of like a boat. The but, stuff that you've yeah. put in that Outback is stunning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, seriously. And, and behind it, too. Yeah, the, the times you, you've come here to pick something, like, there was, I think it was a hood yeah. for your rally car, and, and it's like, yeah, okay, to be fair, we had to take it out of the box. Yeah. But we're looking at it like, mm -hmm. Jeremy, you're a crazy person. This is not going to fit. And it was just like, it fit. Yeah. And there it goes. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, yeah. the Outbacks are huge. And if you think you need a 2020 turbo diesel pickup to tow your race car around, Nope. Yeah. Turns out you just need an Outback and a complete so, disregard. So you've towed your rally car with safety. That's right. It's a 36 Outback. Now, okay. now, you've got stiffer rear springs on it, which I think are yeah, uh, helps. kind of a, an important piece of that puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also helps it's not one of the CVT Outbacks. Right. If I had tried ah. to tow something with the CVT yes. transmission, there's a good chance I would have left the transmission somewhere on the highway. Yeah. Like so that's, and that's so. a big motivator for, yeah. for this topic because right. there's basically everything Subaru now has CVTs. The WRX. Even the WRX. Short of sort of the couple manual transmission cars that are out there. It's basically CVT or a couple yeah, cars of manuals. I, you can get the manual on a bunch of things still. In fact, Subaru kind of was almost about to take the manual away, it seemed like, from like everything across the board. But then, no, WRX still comes manual. Yeah. BRZ still comes manual, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I believe you can get the, the new RS Impreza. No, I think that's CVT. Is that only. CVT only? Okay. Yeah. You can get a Crosstrek manual still. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. And which is probably one of the best Subarus still made. Uh, it's probably one of the, the manual. Yeah, cross so the cross track probably in a manual in a manual is, is probably the one of the best, best Subaru Subarus. right now. It's funny you say it. the last time I drove a cross track was like a 2015 one. Yeah, um, it was my least favorite Subaru that I've driven like uh, in the last several years. Okay, but why? It felt slow, and they're very slow. Not, I'll give yeah, you that. Not planted. Uh, it, uh, okay. Because you know why? I also, at the time, had a similar generation Impreza that I could be like, yeah. with. And the cross drive was like, whoa. But I would be curious if the two cars had the same horsepower. I agree with you, the cross drive does not feel planted. But I don't think that any Subaru right now feels planted. And I have driven like a 22 WRX and stuff like that. Um, hmm. I, I really like the new. The twenty two and up WRX and BRZ. Same. I think I think I think they do feel like really gripping. A BRZ I think actually does feel pretty good. Yeah. Because you expect that car to feel kinda Yeah. I mean light. I don't know, like light, yeah, yeah. or it, skittish or wiggly. Like a responsive jump, jumpy. I was gonna it, say jumpy. I, I thought it was 
when I was driving, I thought it just felt really responsive to what it was. Mm. So, so let, let me let me give some context for this question mm -hmm. where this comes from. So, CVT is one of the biggest factors because like C Subaru is leaning so hard into the CVT, that it's just it's so pervasive out there. And I mean, honestly, okay. it gives me it, that yeah. gives me pause in it from a first standpoint. But the other the other like just big thing is especially now taking the STI away. Yeah, I, I think they've done some good things with the Wilderness Editions. I think I like what they're going, the direction that they're going with those. But it seems like almost everything that they've got now is this very middle of the road car. It, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not going to, you know, set your hair on fire. The biggest problem is that they're not pushing really any thresholds in terms of like performance they're, they're not they're not redefining you know really the market for it except for maybe like the cross track wilderness and the outback, the wilderness. outback wilderness well yeah they redefined yeah. the market in a market that's more relevant to who the company is right so the pinnacle car went from being an sti to uh outback and wilderness. outback xt wilderness is probably like the fanciest it's their it's their flagship yeah. car yeah. now yeah. right it's uh because subarus have always been mediocre cars at the base right that's the the idea behind Subarus is it's a, it's a car, man. Just get in. Well, I, um, I mean, I I don't think so. I think for a long time Subarus were. But and, and all right. So the problem I have is that I don't really. They don't have anything out now that I would call an aspirational car. Everything is kind of attainable, but there's no, it's not like an STI where like you you get an Impreza or a WRX and aspire someday to have this STI because that's the pinnacle of. Performance. Like just from our they, paradigm, they've they've taken well, but but the ascent, the ascent to me is where they've missed the mark the most, and and they know this. They're they're not selling yeah. any of these cars. I, yeah, yeah, and honestly, they might be going away at the end of this year. I, I think they're being called. Like they're, they're not going to be called the Forester. They they said, hey, nobody's buying an ascent. Let's call it a Forester. Let's so just get rid of the third row. So you know, it's interesting. So you go look at an Outback XT versus an ascent right now. Um, again, they're basically the exact same drivetrain. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very similar cars in terms of how it's built. The uh, Ascent has a 5,000 pound towing capacity, and the biggest, you know, most powerful Outback you can get has a 3,500 pound towing capacity. Again, if I needed, if I was suddenly in a market for another road trip, travel, race vehicle, it probably, I'd be looking seriously at an Ascent. Or a Ford Explorer? Well, it, I mean, I'm, I'm me, I'm going to buy another Subaru, right? Right. Um, but yeah, but, but exactly that is that the, be, the weirdest detail with the, yeah. with the sense over the outbacks is they weigh a thousand pounds more. Yeah. So they, they went for more and they threw a whole yeah. bunch and then, more you into know, the, the moon roof and it's like this long, which is, there's yeah, a lot of cool. things that are really cool, but I think the, the problem is that the ascent misses the mark in a lot of ways. And, and like, I've been looking for like possibly a new car, mm -hmm. a, a new to me car, not a new car, but, uh, like Porsche Cayenne keeps coming up. And you look at what Porsche did with the Cayenne, and to me, that underlines how much Subaru has missed the mark with any kind of an SUV. Vehicle. So you want an Ascent STI? They, they should have made an Ascent STI. Uh, they absolutely <laughs> should have. Well, and, and so I, Subaru could lose to Porsche on right. another front? <laughs> it's not that they're going it's to... A, it's a totally different market, but they're, they, they've missed the mark with the Ascent 100%. I, I was telling Jeremy this the other day, because I... You know, I came up in the early aughts when the WRX first landed. A lot of my friends got WRXs and so forth. We're now all older and we've got families. And when the Ascent was announced, I had multiple, well, like three or four guys call me up and say, like, is this going to have a manual transmission? Is it going to be fun? Because, you know, they've, they moved on to minivans and SUVs, but they're like, hey, if I could get back into a Subaru, they could haul the family, but that would be fun. I'm all for it. And then, well, no, it's got a CVT and it weighs, you know, 4,500 pounds. So... None of them got them. I don't, I'm not going to say you're wrong. I don't get that mentality. Every single time I'm on the highway and I see some like Explorer ST trim charge by me, I'm like, what the heck is wrong with you, man? Go get rid of that. You want to drive like that, go get a Focus RS. Go get a, Fo a Fiesta ST. Oh, but sure, they could also tow their Subaru Outback when it breaks down with their Explorer. But here's my point. Is like I, as a driver, I'm comfortable having like, this is the fun car and this is the... Get stuff yeah. done, car. I, I guess and having both of them. The the most the overall point that I guess I would make with that I want to make with the Cayenne is that I'm not saying the Cayenne makes sense, but holy cow, have have tons of people bought Cayennes. 
I think that has more to do with the Porsche badge on the hood than in, in part, the actual so, driving so, I mean, In part, but also because of the performance. That, I mean, it's ludicrous. It's it, it What they're doing with the thing is, is nuts, but there's a market for it for some reason. And, and it, I'm not saying that, that Subaru needs to make an SUV to compete with the Cayenne, but the whole reason that the Cayenne did what it did, I mean, they, Porsche has now sold, I think, as many if not more Cayennes in, since it came out yeah. in 2002 but, than they've sold 911s but, in the entire well, history. You of know what the Porsche Cayenne is? The Porsche Cayenne is the VW Tareg not selling well here. That is them taking exactly the same thing that they were selling like crazy in Germany and Europe and other world markets yeah. and changing the badging on it to sell it here because there is a, I mean, car loans have been really cheap for the last like 10 sure, years. Sure, sure. There's, been, there's a whole segment of people who, like, you know, family people who drive a Porsche Cayenne because it has a Porsche badge on the front and it was in the same price point as the Mercedes that they were looking at or the BMW X6M that they were looking at or something like that, right? I, but I think that there's another slice of that demographic that are driving them because it is actually fun to drive because it is sure. for, for what it is quick i mean and it's like you know would you would you want something that's that size that that can put a smile on your face from the driving experience i think that's what porsche tried to do with that now i'm so, not saying i'm not saying that this is right but yeah but i think you would agree that if you think about subaru's approach to like the tribeca and the ascent fun to drive fast like Good in like engaging tracks. I, I I know what I know what they. I don't think done. the badge thing. Like so, I'm thinking I, I, about the person I know that has a Cayenne. Yeah. He is through and through a hillbilly that went to engineering school and got into race cars. So like his first foray into mechanics was buying a Subaru or not a Subaru, a snowmobile junkyard. You know, making a couple of good snowmobiles, selling the rest to cover his costs, and then he and his friends had snowmobiles. And so that's kind of his mindset, right? He He's yeah. built the Lemons car that we okay. raced, which is a, you know, yeah. overall winning Lemons car. He, you know, when we first got together, he was, um, you know, we were Lincoln and coiling Toyota pickups and going four-wheel driving. Right. You know, he built, uh, he, he figured, like, all those timber sled snow bikes that are out right now that are based on, like, a dirt bike chassis with a snowmobile track on the back and stuff like that. He said... Yeah, these are cool, but they're slow as shit. How can I get, you know, a twin, you know, two-stroke snowmobile motor into Ooh. a dirt bike chassis? Yeah. So he, you know, designed up his own chassis to make a snowmobile motor fit into a dirt bike frame. Right. And, and so he, that's his mindset. And the reason he has a Cayenne is because they're ridiculously affordable in the used market. Yeah. They're yeah. fast. His is loud. He's got two kids in car seats in the back yeah. and all-terrain tires, and he lives up in the hills, and he's throwing 40-mile-an-hour four-wheel slides around every corner yes. on the way to his house in the winter, and just bouncing the, off rev That's winter. a tiny minority of Porsche Cayenne owners. Sure, yes, and we're it, a tiny minority of Subaru, Subaru owners. Sure. Right? But, it, so but it's, it's growing, especially with the first-generation Cayennes. You know, because, I mean, those things yeah. came with, with front, center, and rear locking discs from the factory, air Some suspension, which is yeah. probably not the greatest. But, but those, but it's interesting. I mean... Like, I could go and buy a clapped Porsche Cayenne right now and have a blast with it, sure. But for so, anyway, a quarter of the price of an SN. Exactly. Yeah, you take it, yeah. you take it back a step. I mean, you, I mean, I have a foreigner, I have an SUV, but yeah. man, if I could have a, a Porsche Cayenne with all those bells and whistles, that seems pretty right, fun. Let's, let's get you into a Cayenne. <laughs> well, maybe, but none of the Subaru models, like, like what they did with the Santa or the Tribeca, even go in that direction. They're basically just large mm -hmm. cars. Yeah. And then and then to to take that to the next point with like the wilderness edition. I love what Subaru's doing with the off-road side of things, like with lifting and all that sort of stuff. But they're not going they're they're just scratching the tip of the iceberg with it. They're not really going so, but no, so they're they're smashing they're, that market. They they're I think they're dominating that. Like the overland market and I think their only yeah. real competitor is a forerunner, right? And so people are going to spend $80,000 on their forerunner. Or forty thousand dollars on their on their Outback Wilderness Edition, and they get the benefit of that smug little feeling of getting everywhere your forerunner went, right? Which sure. is half of the selling of of any of these things is like, oh, cool Bronco, I got here in my Subaru, and it's like, good on you, man. Like I also <laughs> yeah. feel good when I get to subvert people. Right. Like it's a human thing. So I think it's I think it's that, super but... cool what they're doing with them, but they could go that one extra step forward, like. Make a little bit, know. little bit more capable off road, high low transfer case, put in an automatic. Oh well, that, that's that's a, but that's like that's a completely different thing, and that's never happening because, okay, 
my my outback in the model year i got my outback you get the three six and the five speed automatic or you get the two five ej engine yep. and a cvt transmission that two five ej engine in that in like the 2012 outback yep. is the same ej engine that was in my 97 like outback right. it's like exactly right. same engine. this is basically. a two five naturally aspirated it's two yeah, yeah. It's a two five naturally aspirated engine no like zero development in terms of like efficiency or anything like that basically but the cvt version gets like 30 miles a gallon and the five speed automatic version gets like 20 miles a gallon yeah. because subarus famously do not get good fuel economy and that and that's why they went to the cvt right. they they went super went to the cvts because they're trying to they're trying to build and progress to the point where they can hit the new cafe standards which is i think 36 mpg at some point in the not too distant yeah, future yeah and and cut consumers are varyingly highly price conscious about fuel economy sure, i'm sure, sure one of the reasons that the ascent does not sell well is you put it next to like you look at the window sticker in it it has like five or six worse mpg than the outback yeah. right now just because of the, the, the weight and the cvts the are fine yeah. i think they're fine you think they're fine if you're not trying to drive sporty Sure. Which a hundred percent of Subaru drivers aren't. It rounds to hundred, I'm sure. Um, a hundred percent of Subaru drivers don't need anything other than a CVT, and they're fine. I know that. Yeah. Like, I have some friends that work service standpoint. department at Subaru dealerships, yeah. and they're like, "Man, they got to be careful all those CVTs." Like, yeah, you work in a service, you're gonna see the ones that come in broken. We've had a That's couple, a couple different generations, never had a problem. So yeah, you have a you have a Forester. We have a Forester with a CVT. We yeah. had a Crosstrek with a CVT. You can talk about a slow car, but the Crosstrek <laughs> yeah. was fun to drive. I mm. with this even with a CVT and a wishy washy suspension, I am convinced that car could win a snow time trial. <clears throat> Stock, I mean, okay. put snow tires on it, sure. Yeah. But versus whatever else out there, I mean, if you you prepped the shit out mm. of a car, sure, right. Yeah. But any car stock, stock for stock, stock. Yeah. Um, a stock yeah. ass cross trick CVT would win. I think the biggest thing that will hold it up is the fact that you have to really get aggressive to get a uh, traction control to turn off. Mm. It breaks loose really progressively. It slides really nicely until it goes meow. Oh, and it makes that little uh, noise when it wants to straighten you out. Well, <laughs> just even from a even from the standpoint of, I guess, I guess my my biggest concern yeah. is that. Really, Steve, the prevalence of the CVTs, like it just, I, I think they're, that's a concern to me. So there's and, there's two kinds of transmissions yeah. in the world too. If you buy a, if, if right now, if you yeah. buy a car, it has one or two kind of automatic transmissions. It has a, a CVT, which I think are all based on this Jatco design that fam is famous for all the Nissans blowing up, right? right? Um, right. The Subaru one is kind of an evolution of that. It's not the same one as the, the Nissans, right. and it's a lot sturdier now than it used to be. Yep. Um, the uh, the second the second kind of transmission you find anything in now is like that ZF based uh, yeah those yeah. are eight HP ten HPs I think they have yep. now right yeah um, and the the way it works generally speaking is the cheap cars get the 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 CVTs. the ASIN or Jatco CVTs yeah the expensive cars get the eight HPs and that's because one is cheap and and one is expensive right? yeah basically it, it right? feels to me one like one is performance one is economy. And, and automatic transmissions have gotten so much better in like the last 10 or however many years to the point where like I think that Subaru is missing the boat by not getting like bringing some kind of these, you know, eight speed automatics or something like that. Well, Even, yeah, it, I mean, the DCTs have become so powerful in the performance market that it's a disadvantage and not to have. Oh, them. that's true. That yeah. Yeah, I don't consider those automatics because yeah, you're finding those like semi-automatic or whatever. Semi -automatic. Or, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah and, but, automated manual. Whatever but uh, yeah, yeah, but DC, DCTs are going away. Those are mostly getting replaced. Like the, the, the all the performance BMWs now have the the the, the, the eight HP like, transmissions yeah. because because DCTs. like those automatics are just now like, the automatics are so good sorted them out. The DCTs are maintenance nightmares. Right. They've ne nobody's right. ever been able to make one of them that's actually reliable for like. Hundred thousand miles. 100, or something. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, or, or for like, you wouldn't tow with one. Oh well, yeah, probably not exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I'm, yeah, my, I, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure. with anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay, tows with a pedal bike. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I guess. I mean, it, it feels to me like Subaru is missing the boat on a lot of these modern technologies. So they're they're, they're putting all their eggs in the CVT basket, and they're just like, we put all our eggs in this basket, and we're gonna ride this thing in. You know? doesn't, but doesn't like an ascent cost like MSRP speaking half of what a Cayenne does? 
Oh yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, you don't buy a new Porsche. Come on. I don't. Cayenne buyers, somebody, Cayenne did. buyers, somebody did. Ascent buyers yeah. are not the same, right? But so, but I think if, like, Su- if Subaru yeah. made an eighty thousand dollar Ascent with a performance transmit, performance automatic transmission with SM you know, or SMG or something like that, nobody would buy it because then nobody's going to spend eighty thousand dollars on a Subaru. So, and mm-hmm. we had this conversation around the SCI in in the context of one of the wonders, one of the speculations I have is why they didn't make it is because. They knew what the expectation was, which was something okay. basically 400 horsepower, um, you know, a, a, a pretty high level of performance. And and my guess is that they they didn't think that they could sell it for less than probably something like sixty thousand dollars. And they didn't. My guess is that they didn't think that anybody would buy an STI if it was sixty thousand dollars, because then you you look around at what all the other cars that are yeah. in that sixty thousand dollar price point of a 400 horsepower STI. And, what does the SCA bring to the table? And so they just, Maybe. they took it off the table. In 2021, if you were going to go to a dealership and walk out with a WRX or an STI, you're looking at what, $8,000 difference? Something like that? The WRX you could get out of there for like 36 yeah, and STI would be hard. No, it was less than 10, I know. Because eight. Yeah, okay. I, think, I, think, I think you were going to walk out of the, the dealership with a WRX for like a little under 40. And then the STI. It was hard because they, they did packages about like what has Recaros and stuff like that. But the STI, I think you were looking at maybe like, yeah, eight more. And what was the sales numbers like WRX versus STIs? were like 20 to 1 or something like that, right? They sold, uh, I think, 20 times as many WRXs as STIs year for year. About 10 times. It was 10, yeah. 10 yeah, to 1? So, yeah. so I, I want to say, put it in the comments if you know, I think the, the most STIs they ever sold in a model year was something like 3,500. It usually was yeah, closer to 3,000 or under 3,000. But then the WRXs, this, like 30, in the WRXs, 30, yeah, they're 000, getting into the yeah. 30,000s. But then the thing is, is like, if you look at Subaru as a whole, what they're selling are Outbacks and Foresters. Right. Outbacks mm-hmm. and Foresters right. are Subaru's bread and butter, which is why I think they're, they're right. doing something. But I'm like saying, Outback even in the, the segment of people who want a performance Subaru or a Subaru that's fun, I think that they're still not going to spend a lot of money. Like the, the fact that well, the fact that so many well, WRXs are sold compared to STIs back in their heyday. To me, is nuts because like if I was gonna, if I had that money in my pocket, and I was gonna walk in and buy the WRX. It, it, there, there's no way I wouldn't walk out with the STI. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> and this might be actually the thing that saves Subarus too, because look at what happened when with Toyotas, classic Toyotas, mm-hmm. when they embraced the overland market, which Subaru mm-hmm. has already done. Starting to, yeah. Yeah, I, they're killing it for the last couple of years. I think they're yeah. and Overland is the hot market right now yeah. for at least a couple more years, probably. Right? Yeah, and we're not biased. No we're not biased by the fact that we live in Colorado. Yeah, no one's True. no one's uh, outdoing Overland Expos right now in terms of attendance. Um, it's the biggest market or the right. biggest segment in SEMA. Yeah, you know, you get oh, rooftop yeah. temp the world. Um, so the next thing that happened then that follows, yeah. yeah, RTT TW. Um, that follows is there starts to be a market for kind of like the resto mod community on the classic ones. Mm -hmm. So I think what needs to be happening now is start an import market. Um, and so like you get like the right hand drive Toyota Land Cruisers cruising around Boulder with their direct injected turbo diesels and their five speeds and their factory cable lockers selling for $80,000 at auction and stuff like that. That's what the GC STIs need to be because that is Subaru doing Subaru stuff at the peak that we all wish we still and, had. And things right? are kind of moving in that direction a bit. There, mm-hmm. Because the STI is gone, there's a lot of people that are going, like, there's, there's almost been a resurgence of people going back to the GD chassis because you can find one for a couple thousand dollars. And, and all of a sudden, people are buying these couple thousand dollar shells and saying, yeah, I'm going to spend twenty dollars to $30,000 to build this mm-hmm. old into my dream Subaru, Subaru. Into right. my dream Subaru. Yeah. I mean, so I think maybe I, this is a, yeah. a, a, a thing I'm sitting here thinking about as we talk and like all of our different entry times and entry ways into Subarus as kind of a community and stuff like that. I came into it like much later than you guys, not only time wise, but also with a different like motivating factor that brought me in. Mm-hmm. I was literally looking for the basis of a race car. Um, right. And right. this was in the early 2010s. Yeah. So at that point I had already identified, okay, Subaru is not making anything new and I don't want anything new anyways. 
or Subaru's not making anything good that's new, and I don't want anything new anyways because it'll be too expensive. I'm looking for the ideal Subaru to start my process because I can't afford an Evo. Right, and I, and I think um, that there's more and more people where that early Subaru is checking the boxes. It is the, I mean, this is some. I mean, it, it comes like, you know, oh, Tasso is just being cynical, or oh, just this, that, or whatever, right? But it's, but honestly, that is the last of the cars that Subaru had to make good because it had a purpose, right? After that, it's just been cashing in on identity, or trying to figure out what it could do to try and cash that's, in. On uh, Oh, the last time Subaru had to make a car for a purpose, right? Was was when it had to for homologation reasons, right? Yeah. After everything after that, and Subaru immediately realized the 2008 car, uh, oops, and they're like, you know what, screw it, let's make Alpacs and Wilderness Editions. Well, oh, there's it's a little bit more to it, but I mean, they're, they're yeah, smaller, they're simpler, more to it, they were lighter. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of things are going for the GD chassis and and kind of by proxy the GC chassis, though the GC is a little bit flexier. GCs and GDs make excellent race cars for various reasons and yep. for certain kinds of racing. Yep. Right? Yep. yep. I mean, a GC drag car, no nope. smokes. No. Nope. <laughs> right? Yeah. Anything Subaru on asphalt, I mean, good on you yeah. for trying. But, but you know, at the moment, I own Subarus from four decades. I own yep. 80 Subarus. I have 90 Subarus. I have early aughts. Oh, sorry, I've got 20, zero zeros you should, Subaru, 2,000 Subaru. Can you, got early can you give us like a preliminary list of what you have? Okay. Yes. I have a couple 88, 89 XT6s. Yeah. Um, a couple. Oh, my God. <laughs> Three? They were bought Three. in a lot. Yeah. <laughs> two, yeah. two and a half. Let's two and a half. Two and a half. But a, a partial great. lot of XTs. Yes. yes. I have an SVX. It's yeah. a 90s, you know, early 90s SVX. Uh, I don't have a 90s uh, Outback anymore. Um, but yeah, sure, I have that. I have in the 2000, I have a Baja, the 06 Baja, right? Right, right. which is kind of, and I have an 01 Outback, that's the one I was forgetting. I have a 2001 okay. Outback, it's slammed and rear wheel drive. Oh, yeah, it, right, yeah. The drift yeah. Back. I have a 2010 Outback, um, that's got a bazillion miles on it. I've got the 2013 WRX, yeah, uh, it's a hatchback. It's a GR. It's actually Tasso. It's probably least favorite car in the whole world. Yeah. Wait, which one? It's the GR 2013 WRX hatch. It's not my least favorite, by the way. We'll come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's fine. I got a 2012 WRX hatchback race car. It's a rally car. Right. Well, you know, full red, full yeah. race car. Uh, I've got, um, yeah, and that's it. And then, I, like I said, recently I've driven the 2023 WRX, the 2024 Ascent. I've driven a 2022 Outback. Uh, I haven't driven one of the new Foresters or Cross Tracks. And you've driven uh, and are familiar with like the, the last generation STI. Oh, yes. And a 2021 STI. Uh, yeah. Right. I had that car so, for like a couple years. Yeah. So you've got, you have, yeah, you're, you're spanning all of the decades. Yeah. So. And, uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the, you know, they're, they each, it's kind of interesting. They're each good for different things. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, the, in terms of like the, if, like if I had to pick one, the grocery getter car out of all of them is probably for me the 2013 WRX. Mm -hmm. You know, I can still put stuff in it. It's fun. It's relatively quick. You know, it's more planted than and more more mm -hmm. you know, than my Outback is. Yeah, um, yeah, I can see yeah. That. Gets about the same fuel economy. You know. But all right, so let me ask this question. I guess the, the kind of right. the, that's on my mind when you when you when we've said all of this about how. There are reasons to go back to the the GC and the GD chassis. Mm -hmm. If if you it's twenty twenty four, and people are thinking about Subaru, but everybody's looking back ten years or more. I mean, my my O three WRX is now twenty one years old. It, it's it can actually legally go to a bar. <laughs> um, if you're looking at cars from the brand mm -hmm. that are twenty years old or so, and there's and there's not not as many things that check the boxes that you can aspire towards in like the last five to ten years. To me, like that that thread can only get so long before the relevance of the brand just loses traction with well, and that's kind of like the the current. Why well, I said I said it doesn't matter what if what what we do to save Subaru. Why what why would we save Subaru? We're not saving Oldsmobile. 
But old Oldsmobiles are sick? Because, yeah. because they have the potential. Okay. But why, that's why, why are we having this conversation? We're having this conversation because yeah. as fun car guys, we're like, hey, we have other fun car guy friends and we're trying to convince them that they really want a Subaru. Well, I, I, I guess like, for me, it's, the, it's, it's yeah. honestly the frustration of like, you, know, you look at what they could do, but they but they don't. Like, they, they could have kept the STI going. Yeah, sure. And look at what Elon Musk could do, but he doesn't because he does whatever he wants because in well, theory, and, he's and a it, free person. He's more free than the rest of us. I'm a person that's tied to Subaru. I like Subarus, yeah. and I like what they've done before, and I, I don't want to see them sunset and, and just kind of get to the point where... No, you, you, you want to stop losing arguments with other fun <laughs> car guys. <laughs> I would like to stop losing arguments with other fun car guys. I think our really best don't. chance for getting respect from dudes in khaki shorts and tall socks at Cars and Coffee is if Subaru goes out of business. Because then we'll be one of them. It, <laughs> Actually, oh, they man. still get Corvettes. Damn it. I don't know. <laughs> just, man. Yeah. We, we, yeah. There's just not a, a current relevance to Subaru other than that overlanding market, which is fine. If you That's, want to park one yeah. tire up on the curb at Cars and Coffee and deploy your rooftop tent... <laughs> good but, right but like, the thing, the thing that's Divider. frustrating to me is they could they have put an STI 6 speed in the ascent yes could they still yes hey give, would it have been give, interesting give me an ascent somehow mm -hmm. just give me an ascent I will put an STI Swap 6 it. speed in it and I will prove to you it kind of sucks and I get the flat iron special <laughs> right, and right. you can sell it at the dealership here $100,000 people will come I'll, from around will, the world will, for it listen I will gladly fight Canvas sure to like the bitter end just to prove that it's not the thing that you think you want. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The reason they wouldn't make a uh, current SDI is because they don't want, it doesn't matter anymore, right? It's, right. Just, I, I it's think, not a car that's worth well, driving the thing, anymore. The thing that I think has really confused them, or probably pushed them in this direction, is, is the Solterra. Mm. There, there's a weird thing that happened with Solterra. And, and, that they're sold out? Well, and how many of them they sold. And they're so, good. And they're good. <laughs> so, so the Solterra... First year of the Solterra, Solterra was released, it's, it's between forty-five and fifty-five thousand dollars. I think the price is corrected a little bit, but they basically sold just shy of ten thousand units in twenty twenty-three. It is a twenty twenty-three model Which, year. Which, by the way, is still tiny numbers for a car it's, It is still tiny yeah. numbers, yeah. but the, the crazy part of it is, is it costs so much more than an STI, and yet it yeah. sold three times as well as an STI. Because and it's point, good. And I'd point out that all of Subaru's yeah. public conversation about STI has been that it's going to be an electric. Yeah, and they, that was before yeah. they sold all these. Sold and that's probably their best yeah. chance to make a relevant car for a conversation. Maybe true. Well, and it's but, uh, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Uh, electric car sales are yeah. Are and not, I'm not a electric is the, the future person. Mm -hmm. Like it, I think I think what Toyota's doing with hydrogen stuff now is much yeah. more interesting. The, the hybrid so, so yeah. the hybrid is is really interesting, and to me that 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 could be. This is a whole other topic. I think they need to do a performance hybrid WRX. I think I think there's a potential there to do something that could be really interesting. Super, but that's a whole just Super WRX topic. Rally One. They just kind of like Maybe. ban people from owning car scales anywhere near that car at this point because well, it's gonna be a six thousand pound sports car. Oh, it wouldn't be anywhere near that. But but so the, the Forester Hybrid that's coming out at the end of this year is a twenty five. Right. It's gonna be a Toyota hybrid system. If right. that has the Rav Four hybrid system in it, which it likely will, because they're almost the same size. That's interesting. I mean, to me. maybe that might be the that might be the driving factor in the Foresters design. I mean, the yeah. the Solterra is a Toyota with a Subaru badge. Like, it's, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. it's yes, the exact same. Which is why it's good. But yeah. well, and but then Subaru designed all the X mode functionality, which yeah. was surprisingly good. Yeah, it was X mode. It was fine. X, X mode <laughs> is. It was, I was I was I was surprised how good it was. And you see how much okay. you see how much other off road SUVs struggle off road. Just go to YouTube. Yeah, you'll see what you see, and the fact that the Solterra seems to be better in some ways but, than some of these. So vehicles. X mode in like the the current Outbacks are, are like X mode. Subaru's done this thing over the years where they say they have they say a word like symmetrical right. all wheel right. drive, and it's supposed to mean all these. It's supposed to mean this thing, except right. in every single model, it's implemented completely differently. Yep. Yep. Like the four wheel drive systems in a Subaru, they their 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 marketing people would have you believe that Subarus. 50 years of all-wheel drive history. Every single Subaru model has a completely different all-wheel drive system. But, right? True, but that uh, in a lot of these cars, and especially the Wilderness Editions, the, the Crosstrek Wilderness, the Outback Wilderness, right. the, the X mode is nope. really good. There we go. So, the Soul oh, Test. Yeah. So, <coughs> <coughs> that Soul Johnny being rude to Jeremy. Sorry. We agree it's a Toyota with a Subaru badge on yeah. it. 
The difference between the so I don't you guys haven't driven the Toyota version of that neither have I, I haven't driven any of them but I'm gonna just say as a guy who knows about cars and also computers because a electric car is a computer on yeah. wheels um, the difference between the Solterra and the Toyota variant is code it's computer code yeah that's that's what the X mode is in an electric and car, I think the right? Toyotas have it as well it's just sure. because Toyota's got an interest in Subaru they have the Subaru guys yeah. Programming. But the way that car making works, in, especially these days where cars are computers on wheels, yeah. is we want to differentiate price points. So therefore, we make we're gonna make the code to make this thing a little yeah. better, and then you pay more to get more computer code to do more of what yeah. you want. Like yeah. you know, most obviously Tesla, Tesla with their pay to play program. Right, right, right. Yeah, you can buy a Tesla and pay for it, like to have code that makes it faster and drive farther right. and right. Mm -hmm. do things like that, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. honestly, that's how every single electric car is going to be now because it's just yeah. so easy for the auto manufacturers to do it. And the cheapest way, generally speaking, for a car company to make something is to only make one thing yeah. and then just use code to turn different features that you pay for on and off. Yeah, the, for sure. Right? It's like, you know, so. back to the Cayenne, like if you've got, I mean, at some point they had five different engines as options. <laughs> they had the yeah, six-cylinder sure. naturally aspirated, yeah, six cylinder yeah, turbo, six I, and maybe it's more because I think there was a six cylinder diesel, eight cylinder nationally aspirated, eight cylinder turbo. There might have been an eight cylinder diesel. There's a, there was a six cylinder NA2. Yeah. Yeah, 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 six cylinder, yeah, there was the VR6 variant. Yeah, right, right, right. But, and then it's like, so you're making all of these different engines. It's like, well, what if you had that one platform and one motor? And it was the same in all of them. And then, yeah, you can turn it up or turn it down with the code, like you're saying. I mean, it, from from a scaling standpoint and from an efficiency standpoint, it, it does make a lot of sense. But in the electric model, caters to it much better. And then if you can make the batteries modular, so you know, depending on how much power you're turning the motor up to, you can get a bigger or smaller battery. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, honestly, it, I, if I remember correctly, there's a I think there's a, at least one family of Tesla where you pay to use more of your battery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's kind no, of that's how the they thing. decided. To and do if that. you think. That will never work. People will get mad. Remember that, like Call of Duty and Fortnite and Minecraft are killing it right now, and it's exactly their model yeah. as well. Yeah, and don't worry, they all have they already have the laws and the lawyers to make sure that if you hack your car to yep. use more battery and give you more top no, no, speed, no, 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 no. Yep. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that's there's some there's some tuning out there for Teslas, but I I right. don't know. What, I'm not even gonna touch with the ten foot pole yet because I just don't have any. I don't. I don't have any you can't even sell catalyst downpipes. <laughs> They're breaking so our Lord and Savior things. Elon okay. Musk's personal pocket bank. Okay, but that's the other that's the other piece of the puzzle that maybe we should like clarify. Before in the before times, you could buy a WRX and you mm -hmm. could turn it into an S two. Mm. And and asterisk. Well, <laughs> I, I'm I'm almost there, and yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. cost me twice as much as an SDM would, but it's possible. The more uh, this is a big sidebar, I'll make it five seconds yeah. long. The more I get into this stuff, the more I realize how many differences there are between those cars. Oh, for sure, sure. for sure. Okay, next, go back. But the thing of it is, is now not having that aspirational car is somewhat more limiting because you like the, your ability in a lot of areas, Colorado being one of them, California being another, other states that are they're doing ambitions. this thing, yeah. your ability to really like close the gap between like the aspirational model and the, the, the more attainable model is, is significantly different. California is weird because you can take a GC and put an STI engine in it as long as you put all the STI stuff, including the gas tank. That's legal. In, yeah, you in can swap anything and anything as long as you meet up, the tighter up to a point. emissions requirement. Up to a point. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> you could take you could take an Outback 36 and automatic transmission and put it in your GC. And, as long as it's in the same class of vehicle yeah. and you meet the tighter emissions requirement and you go yeah. to a tighter emissions requirement, then you're fine. From talking to Brian so, at iWire, it's tricky. It, it's quite tricky. Depending yes. on the, the newer the newer SCI that you're trying to swap in, the, the harder and harder it gets. And sure. once you get to the canvas cars, it's super challenging. Yes. And you wouldn't want to do and, that anyways. Like, well, the latest motor you want to put in there is a 2007 because after that, okay. Subaru went downhill as a company. But but the point is, is the, there are there are ways that you can approach it, but it gets right. really complicated because of how I mean, literally you're you're you have all of everything that drives the, the newer STI in the older whatever. Um, sure, but also California wrote the book on breaking the rules, right? Like it's it's hot rod culture comes from there. It's always been one of the strictest states um, from well, like an emission standpoint, a modification well, standpoint, but also one of the most modified car states. 
Which is weird. Around. I can't. You 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 from there? Yeah, I, no, I don't understand. It's it. the heart of car culture still. Yeah. Like if you think yeah. that you Kentucky is or something like that because you're allowed to slap a lawnmower motor on a goat and ride it around. Um, like, yeah, yeah, so I mean, fine, you can do stupid stuff other places, but California still drives the U.S. car market. So let's, let's look it down the path of like the emissions specifically, other than the fact that like modifying a car is now different and more challenging than it was, you know, a handful of years ago. And so, like, like now, because of that, there would be more of a reason to say, well, I'm, I'm going to really save up and go for the aspiration. You want to buy, you want to buy it in the way that it. Is close, is close to yeah. what you want it to be versus... Which is why the Outback Wilderness exists, because, right, the Outback Wilderness is the Outback with all the aftermarket modifications that people had started putting on their Outbacks around fair. 2015, yeah. right? Basically. Yeah. I mean, it's lift, lift, yeah, lift yeah, kit yeah. Kind of what or, it is, yeah. You know, but and, other stuff that you couldn't do, like an upgraded CVT and stuff like right. that. Right? It's, yeah. You know. But, but I, I just feel like they need to have more like an aspirational outback like take it that one next step further and something that like an ascent that doesn't have a cvt in it and that gives somebody that came out of their wx and sti that needs something bigger for whatever family reasons a path okay to like turbo diesel ascent with a stick shift but it has to be mounted all the way to the floor and have a tall ass stick on it so you can you can lower your seat all the way and be sitting there and yeah, like cape hangers. I'm not even yeah. sure what that is. Truck driving is what you're doing at that point. Yeah. Make it a make it a good like the only way to save Subaru TM um is to save Subaru is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what? Right. Uh, trademarking save Subaru is to yeah. make one into a small semi truck. I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat something that I think I said off camera okay. before. Um everybody I know who has a VB WRX, it's a 2022 or 2023 WRX. Yeah. Every single one of them I've been in, every single one of them I've seen is a six-speed manual, and the owners are not Subaru people. They are middle-aged people who wanted a fun manual car. They went yeah. on websites. They searched, what is a manual car that's fun that I can buy right now? And just about the only thing that <laughs> they, they ended up with a WRX because... And they found an E36. And they're like, no, but I live in the snow. And like, yeah. oh, here's here's no, no. But in terms of new cars, these were people who were setting out to buy new cars because yeah. they always buy new cars. I don't know, right? They're at that age when you buy new cars yeah. instead of or lease them even. Yeah. Right? And, that, they, and they settled on WRXs, and then they found that, out, and then they found out. Oh, wait a second! It's a WRX. That what's World Rally Experimental, huh? And then they do more googling, and they get on Facebook, and yeah. they find out that they're supposed to have a vape. And they're supposed to flat bill. Yeah. Apparently. And, 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 no, that's and, probably old. And then that car is supposed to go. Doo, 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 psh, yeah. And then, you know. And but here's true. the thing is like that car for, <laughs> for the, something that's coming into it that way is absolutely perfect. Yeah. And to be fair, what they've done with the new WRX in the way that the engine behaves in the way that the car handles. If you're coming into that car with, I want something all wheel drive and manual and fun. And you've never driven a Subaru before and you get in that yeah. car, you're really, it's going to, I, I, I like that car. And that would check cheap. the boxes. It's like 12 grand less than a golf car. Yes. Okay, but here's my point. <laughs> I'll use myself as an example. Yeah. I got a WRX because I wanted an STI, but I couldn't afford it. So I wanted to, you know, go through the process. And it's taken about 20 years. But I'm almost there. Of turning it into an STI. But somebody that comes into the, the car exactly and, mm -hmm. and lands in the WRX exactly the way that you described. Now they're there. Now they've had it for two years. Now they're familiar with it. And they want... You know what? I want that experience again. I, I now know what this is like and I like this. Mm -hmm. What's the next level? There's the RSCI. nowhere there's nowhere they can look except for outside of the RSCI. Right. That's but the problem. I think they're gonna have that car for ten years. They and might. then go get the electric whatever fun thing. Or it's Icon will now make Resto Mod Subaru STIs yeah, in awesome. addition to their Broncos and Land Cruisers. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to go spend $80,000 on one of them because their Bitcoin paid off and money's like, no I mean, problem. Yeah, you could do a Resto Mod GD. And... You could clean up. They, okay, clean. Right Even now. Even just moderately some, mild no, stock No, go, go look at Bring a Trailer. Like, the yeah, some of the, some of the, like, the, 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 the hero cars in our world, like the, the, the S, what are they, S201s, the, oh, the old so Type RAs, right? the JDM ones, yeah. the 555 crap, right? I'm not yeah. a big on the GC world in that okay. stuff. I okay. know there's a lot of interesting variants that people 
pay money for. Right. But like the the but GDs aren't aren't like going gangbusters on bring a trailer still. They they but they rebounded significantly. There was, Maybe there was in, you, in the used where, market, yes, they they sure have. Well, there's there's a point. I, I don't know how long ago this was, but it was maybe six or seven years ago, where the the, the wildest one was you can have a two liter WX that was swapped to a two five and had a decent amount of modifications to it, and it was worth like two to three thousand dollars. Sure, like like yeah. it was basically worth nothing. Last bug I bought, I paid seven hundred seven hundred fifty bucks for a running and driving. I, I thought about doing a six-speed swap a handful of years ago, and I looked at what my car was worth. And it was like, I'm going to spend twice what my car is worth yeah. to just do a six-speed swap. And I'm like, I'm just, the five-speed's working. I'm just going to hold on. Yeah. Now, and if you were patient, you could sell your wagon right now for 20 grand. I would, well, I don't know if you get it up that high. Yeah. patient. If, if I put the six-speed in it, it might. It's low miles because you never drive it. It's never it's been driven hard on the track because you never drive it. Um, it has modifications. <laughs> Yeah, I'm talking shit. Yeah, um, <laughs> it has it has the right modifications. It has the right modifications. That's a twenty thousand dollar WRX, and it's Sonic which Yellow, is, which for some reason people are into because it's the best super color. No, but it is weird and weird people like it. So it's the best. But but the point is, is like like that car is now. I mean, uh, any any of the the two liter WRXs, if they're clean, like really like straight cars, good paints, good interior, mm -hmm. reasonably modified. I mean. That's ten to fifteen thousand dollars car now, whereas before they were literally like two to three thousand dollars. Yeah, but I mean, to your but point, now that that's probably as high as they're going to be for the foreseeable future. But. I don't think so. I think when someone starts like properly doing them, because at the at this point, the bringing trailers, all this stuff, you're you're still buying twenty something year old Subaru build quality, which has always been. Eh. And the, everyone's know, afraid I think of to rust. Extent, it's a little bit better than some. Some of the years. Depending. Well, I think you take someone in the Northeast, which is a big Subaru market. Yeah. They, you, they, you look at a 20 year old Subaru. Actually, you're from there. So I need, yeah. I need insider information on this. You mm -hmm. look at a 20 year old Subaru, you think to yourself, oh shit, I bet that's rusty. <laughs> so I will say this about that. When you buy and sell Subarus in the Northeast, holes in the, in the, the rockers gone, holes yeah. in the rear quarters. That's but just to be expected. It's because, to be expected. And so that's still and so that's, what? that's not rusty. That's, that's normal. That's rusty normal. is feet Flintstone car feet mm -hmm. through the floorboards. But so that's yeah. what people are, are afraid of on bringing a trailer, yeah. buying a two hundred thousand mile twenty year old Subaru. Is it like, oh god, I want to buy a twenty year old economy car? I don't care if it's a little cool, but it's the same shit with like the old Broncos and old Land Cruisers and stuff like that too. But you take a company like properly like. Brings them down, patches rust, mm -hmm. galvanizes, you know, interior frame rails or something like mm -hmm. that. Goes through brand new OEM this, resto modded that, proper motors. We have a pedigree with this, you know, not like an IEG or something like that, but like a oh, we have we've been remanufacturing Subaru motors to OEM specification for the last twenty years, guaranteed hundred thousand mile. You know, people aren't buying them to tune them or something like that. They're buying them because they want a brand new 2004 STI. Um, that I, is an $80,000 yeah. well, car, I think. To be fair, to, um, kind of kind of related to that is right. clean. Well, yeah, well, shit, you I get a quarter million there, dollars. But just, like, clean <laughs> GD STIs are kind of going up yeah. because kind of, yeah. there's not, yeah. like, at this point, like, I've seen him for thirty to forty thousand dollars on yeah. Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, and I think and, that's too much. Every, people are everybody stupid. clowning on them. Mind everybody you. clowning, but they sell eventually. <laughs> well, I'll, I mean, in my mind, one of the reasons I will never sell my WRX is if I if I ever if sold my WRX and, and and then two days later I'm like, what have I done? I need to find another one of these. Like it could take. A year because or more to you have that them. shitty land job computer of a BMW, right? Right. So if you want a dumb car, you always got one of them, but you're never going to get your scalpel back. Uh, boy, uh, wow. that's a whole other. Really, that's a whole other really thing. triggered you today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but the, I mean, they're hard to find. Is the point? Yeah. And like, there's there's no going back to sell it, and so like I can never sell it because I can never go back to that point. So, but but I yeah. guess like as we're wrapping it up here, oh, I'm just getting fired up. You're just going to fire it up? Buckle okay. up for another hour. Well, 
It's a problem just to me. That, like, right. there's there's mm -hmm. one car that can attract people that want that fun meal transmission turbocharged car experience, and then there's nothing like there's nothing else for them. And I guess maybe the argument you can make is the fact that they are there is a bit that you can do with them, and there's more and more that we're learning that you can do. Maybe that's enough. Subaru literally just brought back the Impreza like 2.5 RS badging. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And their whole. I I I. Okay, I know a guy who has a GC. It's a sedan, so yeah. I don't know what the code is, but yeah, uh, he has a 2001 World Rally Blue 2.5 RS sedan yeah. with the wing, the exhaust, yeah. the scoop, the yeah. the you know, I think it's the nice blue interior. You know, okay. he he, okay. he he's he's had that thing since he's had that thing for a number of years now, 15 years. He didn't buy it new. He bought sure. it with like 50,000 miles on it. Um, he's th that car is. It's in the northeast, so it's a little rusty. It's starting to let them down. Problems, you know. Okay. It's, you know, it's a you know twenty three year old car. Yeah. And one of the things he's looking at is a new Impreza RS. I could see it now. <laughs> I actually drove one. Um, yeah. And it's it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, it's it's not. It, it didn't like. It didn't grab me mm -hmm. like the way that maybe one of those old RSs did. Um, but but part of the yeah. reason why that car, that old RS, would grab you or I is because it's like, oh, it's that car. It's the car that we saw well, no, that I we mean, looked at. Having it was a coupe. Coupe. But having oh, ridden and driven in them, okay, sure. They like the lightness, the feel of that car mm -hmm. was it was engaging. Okay, and, sure. and I, I think a lot yeah, of these, a lot of these modern cars, that's like what I'm saying. Yeah, but it's it's like it's just that driving experience. Yeah, but but my point is Subaru with the Impreza RS decided that they wanted to, to try to catch that same, they wanted to catch the people who know what a 2.5 RS is, yeah. right? Or have some nostalgia for it, except they wanted to put them in the exact same car that they make, like different, different yes. minor Yes, and, and the weird part is it's only with the CVT. Only, yeah. and, and then it's got like the different driving modes of the CVT, which is kind of, it's like, okay. Yeah, I mean, Subaru, but, Subaru makes like two cars right now. They make yeah. a 2.5 NA and they make a 2.5. Right, right. That's basically right. the whole yeah. family. And then they yeah. they put different, like they look they look different <laughs> from the outside, and they change the the height a little bit, but they're basically yeah. the same car. I will I will tell you. I mean, if I if I had, well, I guess the price point actually it's not that far apart. Um, I think the Crosstrek Wilderness is more interesting than the two five RS currently, mm -hmm. and sure. I would be yeah. more interested in the Outback Wilderness versus the two five RS or the. They made it FA twenty four. Manual transmission, cross trek with lower suspension. Isn't that what's coming right now? I don't know about. I don't know about me. It would be the two point five RS of the modern Subaru offerings. Is what I'm getting at. If I had to, if I had right now to buy, if I right this minute I have to walk over to the dealership and buy a new Subaru, mm -hmm. and money was like, well, I would probably buy an Outback Wilderness, mm -hmm. because I'm curious to live with that car. Um, I'm just like, would so, it be would it be would it be fun enough that like I like the lift and I like the off road features of it, and I would be willing to live with yeah, any of sure. the weirdnesses of the CVD? And the answer, I the answer is dangerously probably yes. Well, so, so we recently went through this as a couple when we went to get our because we you do and try and keep you and Abby, not you and I. No, you and I. Um, oh. no, yes, me and Abby. Okay. Um. <laughs> Because we had a cross track, we we're like, oh, cross track wilderness is coming. Yeah. Here's Forester wildernesses. I forget there's wilderness it's, everything nowadays. Yeah. Um, and we literally went back and forth. Like weirdly, even though I mean, shit, I have a Land Cruiser, I have a lift. Or, you know, it's actually, it's not lifted, but it's still a very off road capable three quarter ton pickup truck. Um, we camp with that thing. We got over the years, all this kind of stuff, access all sorts of four wheel drive vehicles. For some reason, we end up taking her Subaru, you know, side country the most mm. of anything, right? The mm. what the wildernesses are made for, what most people do with their Jeeps, oh, which is yeah. drive up old railroad grades, like, yeah. like you know, Rollins mm. Pass and stuff like that. We're like, we we end up doing this a lot with this car. Should we gild a wilderness for your next one? Yeah. Um, yeah, with the cross track. Should we get a wilderness edition of whichever model um, for the next one? We wanted a little bit more trunk space, um, just for like you know Abby's gone camping with like a friend before, and they had the cross trek filled to the gills because it was her bachelorette party, and they 
wanted to have like a really cool camp set up and really kind of be out there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit more trunk space, blah, blah, blah. We determined that we didn't need a wilderness ability vehicle to do most things. Mm -hmm. And right. the 99% you're driving it, you're not there. Right. And so the difference in tire cost, um, fuel mileage, body roll, all this kind of stuff like that. You right. know, we went with a normal Forester Sport versus a Forester Wilderness, wilderness. Yeah. because it's like more sporty, right? So most of what Abby does in the thing is drives the hour right. commute to work, right. of which two thirds is mountain roads and and little twisty canyons and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So we went and in, including in the snow, I mean, we work a job where we have to show up no matter what the weather's like, right. and we don't right. get snow days, so um so and it's amazing for that like it is it's yeah. a absolutely great vehicle it has in, in Subaru's autopilot which they yeah. claim is not autopilot but it totally is um the, with the lane holding yeah don't yeah. crash because of what i just said right. but they even sell I, i'm not going to say this because i will for sure get myself sued um for the one person that listens to the podcast but yeah, there's two there's, there's two for right. sure ways that that car is essentially autopilot okay it'll do that it's got a great sound system with the Harman card and stuff in it it's got an actual subwoofer yeah it's got cup holders out the yin yang it warms up fast it talks to the satellites and her cell phone does, so does your steering wheel get hot it doesn't get it doesn't have a steering wheel oh, here the, um, the ascent steering wheel gets hot for you that's yeah. crazy yeah. it doesn't have seat <laughs> air conditioners i, don't, I, don't I guess right comes from it. but it's i mean but they're it's great as a car you don't yeah. need you don't like so most people don't need to so turn, bring this back around here. I mean just just to underline, mm -hmm. what you just described is literally what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Yeah. Right in the snow, can do all those things. Like that's literally that's mm -hmm. Subaru's bread and butter. Right it's now. not STIs and, and right. wilderness editions are popular right now, but that's not what makes a Subaru a Subaru. That's just their current like I mean, high look at this pinnacle car. I think, I think for like, you know, I think for the a lot of the people who decide they need to buy a wilderness, it's basically an appearance package for them. Yeah, for them, the extra ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars for the wilderness is chump change, right? That's what they make a day when they have a good day, oh, whatever yeah. their job is, right? Oh, so it's well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Subaru, that's, that's yeah, the market. Yeah, Subaru owners, geez. Overlanders is well, the overland fair. market, right? That's fair. They don't mm -hmm. think twice about an eight thousand dollar rooftop tent that doesn't even have a rack, right? You got to get your own rack on top of that too, right? So that's that's that market, mm -hmm. right? But that's also the Cayenne market. That's it's the same. Mm -hmm. Not the in Boulder, market. what's that? Not the used Cayenne market. Not the used Cayenne market, but the hot Cayenne market, or right. or the whatever the hot Tesla is right now, um, or or any of these kind of things. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Mm. It, there's no, there's nothing to save, and it doesn't matter if it gets saved. And I'll stick by that point because okay. whatever it is is fine for what it is right now. The Crosstrek is the new two two point five RS. Subaru hasn't made a good car since two thousand seven, and I'm out. Okay. Subaru hasn't made a good cart since 2007, but your Forester is just all around great, huh? Yeah, it's fine. It's a good cart. Okay. <laughs> Sports car. Oh, Sports man. Sports car. Sports car. Yeah. <laughs> Subaru hasn't made a sporty car since 2007. Subaru hasn't made okay. a good sports car I forgot. Since... It's a motorsports podcast, so we should <laughs> keep it about that. So Subaru okay. hasn't even made a car since 2007 because it hasn't been for homologation reasons. All right. So really. Okay. We can Oof. agree to disagree on most of these points, but, but let's... <laughs> Would you agree that they need to move beyond the CVT, or do you think the CVT is fine? That's I think I think the does. CVT is is fine for what it does and who Subaru is. Mm -hmm. End of story. Really like great. You can't, you can't get past it's that. It's the reason right. you don't need a low range trans or transfer case. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. But but there's also something to do with the stall or like where it will, if you're going to have too much of a grade, it will actually cut the engine so that the belt doesn't slip. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was watching some stuff on this weekend. People trying oh. to off-road their Subarus. Yeah. And, like, they go up, and it's, it's got the power, but the transmission failed. Well, at some um, point, you need to yeah. stop doing that to your Subaru and just go buy an XJ Cherokee. I don't know why people... Or I, Well, that's why, because it's fun for them. No, even 400, see, even the getting, bad ones are expensive. Ah, it's, they're getting it's, falling into the trap. You get to, you get just enough that you want to go to the next level, and now there's nothing okay, in the okay. supermarket, so you have to go... So, so I haven't see. done my overlanding build yet, because, yeah. I mean... Like I need to buy more cars, but my Halo overlanding build is a 2001 six-cylinder Subaru SUS that mm -hmm. I import one of the Australian dual-range five-speed transmissions oh, okay. for. Put a 444 in the rear end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be that could be a lot of fun. Oh, it could be a lot oh, of fun. No. Well, Harvey, <laughs> Harvey's got a, a Baja with a 444 high-low. Oh, he has, he put the high-low. He has got the high-low. <laughs> 
And that thing is cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so here's the thing: is that mm. that's dumb. That's a dumb idea for me to do because it's a yeah. huge amount of effort. Yeah, it is a lot of effort. <laughs> I know. Well, at the same time, Man. when you could for I don't know what an XJ Cherokee costs these days. I, like I, this I, much okay. mass probably, and you get an XJ Cherokee. <laughs> All right, and Even less than that. and it's. Yeah, I don't know what the going rate on meth is, but I assume that's how all Cherokees are purchased. Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Of the older wow. ones. Not the new ones. The new ones are only bought okay. and stolen gold teeth. I'm going. Um, but oh, the old God. ones are bought in drugs for sure. Oh, um, they all yeah. have crack manifolds, and it's fine. It's, it's, it's good fun. at what it does. Okay. It's the ultimate you know, I Subaru. Just, I, the I, ultimate I, Subaru is an XJ Cherokee. I test drove a five-speed manual 90s Jeep Wrangler. What are those? Uh, Which one? FJ? 90s? No, FJ is to no. thing. Um, Late 90s. 90s, or either a TJ. That's probably TJ. TJ. Coil Springs? I just, yeah, I just... Coil Springs, TJ. Coil Springs, TJ. Yep. I just test... No, a few weeks ago, I test drove a TJ because somebody on my block was selling one. I was like, oh, I've never owned one of those. I wonder what this is like. It, it was manual. Mm -hmm. It was like driving a U-Haul was, mm -hmm. was my mm -hmm. driving experience. Yeah. And I was like, not for me. But I get it. But they are what they are. Yeah. Right and a Wrangler is not a Cherokee. Okay. But, yeah, boy. All right, I, one I, more cut. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you doing, Spencer? Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm good. Uh, eh. On a slightly related note, he's very good. <laughs> I, this is this uh, podcast is probably never going to see the light of day. Uh, on a slight, put this on a slightly related note, I'm it's visiting family in New York uh, in, later this week. And um, I'm going to borrow one of my car buddies' cars out there just because it's easier because I got yeah. some stops to make yeah. and stuff. And I have I have three choices. Okay. I have, okay. I have a late 80s Ford Escort. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have like a 93 Miata, like an NA, yeah. 1. 6. And I have uh, um, an XJ Jeep. And I um, have to drive. And I, New York okay. State in the winter, right? New York State in the winter. And, and, have, and I have to drive to Pennsylvania. You have the best Outback, essentially, the best BRZ well, no, no, in the Miata. Flying. No, no, I'm saying. No, yeah. like, of your options, the yeah. XJ, which is the ultimate version of the Outback. You have the Miata, which is the ultimate version of the BRZ. Or you have the Escort, which is the ultimate version of the BRZ. Wait, which the, Escort was it? Yeah, the, the ultimate like version a, of the BRZ in reverse. Yeah, okay. Like a, like a different. Or no, wait, is it? Was it old enough to be a rear-wheel drive escort? No, it's no, front-wheel okay. drive. So it's it, an, a BRZ going back. It's actually... So the I, ultimate GC, then, we'll call it. I've, 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 I've driven so. it. It's extremely similar driving to my 1988 Subaru GL. Hmm. Yeah, that, 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 that's actually pretty the, 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 the Jeep, yeah. No, yeah. that sounds right. Yeah. No, 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 the Escort. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Escort? The escort. Oh, yeah. God. No, GL, it's a, it's a hat, uh, coupe. GL coupe. Oh, not, the front not a wagon. Drive. Yeah. Wow. Front-wheel drive. Mm. Um, Three-speed automatic. I guess you got to go with the BRZ. <laughs> I think I'm going to take the Miata, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you I, put some snow tires on it, it'd be fun. <laughs> it's not summer side. <laughs> oh. Yeah, good. Well, well yeah. Jeremy, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> I mean, thanks for coming on the podcast these two times. Godspeed. <laughs> yeah. Man. Okay. Well, because this True podcast story. has to end, and I, if this, if you ever see the line of day of this podcast, it's, it's an editing miracle. Um, but any, any final points before we wrap it up here? Mm. Yeah, I have the, yeah. No, yeah, I have the, I have the last word. 2007 was peak Subaru. By the sound of it. 06 was peak Subaru. 07, everything got cheap and cruddy. Mm. Mm. Okay. New hot take for final word. The Group A Legacy was peak Subaru. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and uh, that's it. Okay. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you've made it to this to this point, thanks for listening. Thanks for your support. Let us know what you think. Is Subaru going down the wrong path? Are they doing good things? What would you change? Let us know. And until Should next time. Should you just buy an Evo? My final thought is yeah. find somebody like grocery store, racetrack, autocross, I don't care where you see them, with a new WRX and ask them what they think of it. Be really curious to mm -hmm. hear that. And when sure. they tell you that they love it, then use that as confirmation that you should go buy one right now. In fact, it, the new WX is definitely worth checking out if you haven't driven a new Subaru in like a handful of years, or you're just curious. I think I think all these new Subarus, it's making me on the Outback Wilderness. It's making me think like I need to I need to get behind the wheel and just see what it's all about. Yeah. Check them all out and see if it grabs you or not. 
Um, and then drive a manual cross track and see if it's better. Sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jeremy said I got the last word. So um. Tasso from OTC Racing. Check him out on all the socials. Jeremy, uh, uh, Money Shift Rally, all the socials. You're in FlatironStudio.com. Thanks for support. Till next time. Stay tuned, Flatiron Studio. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the Flatiron Syndicate Motorsports Podcast. Once again, we'd like to let you know that your support is what makes this show possible. Be sure to check out our online store at FlatironStuning.com for any of your aftermarket or OEM Subaru parts needs. And as always, stay tuned with Flatiron's Tuning.